Who That's said he go face? I hit go, you fucking hey, really? lack of pervert. Well, you don't, know, you don't know what? It's not he go. It's I hit go. Hold on. He's not you perverted enough. Face? Uncultured. No. I don't believe you. Come on. No way. I'm actually having a tough time now because of these trans activists. So my issue is with trans activists and not actual trans people. Are okay, you so you joking? Say, here's a tweet of yours from just the end of last month, not that long ago. Right or no? Yeah, it's like from five days ago. You say the goal of the trans movement is not simply to exist. The goal is to erase women, mutilate children, sexualize kids, take away free speech, class pedophilia, oh as my an God. identity, uh, remove parental rights, indoctr indoctrinate kids, violence to obtain, and they're willing to do violence to obtain their goals. So, um, when you say the trans movement, it seems to me that you are speaking generally about trans people uh, having this goal. And when you say trans movement, I don't know exactly what you mean, because it seems that most trans people or that I've seen, maybe with the exception of Caitlyn Jenner, uh, it seems to uh, disagree with this, seems to identify as being a part of the trans movement. So what is the difference between what is the trans movement? Who is a who is a member of that? What is this organization? So what, okay, so what I'm talking about here is the trans movement in the in the trans activist movement. So the people pushing these ideologies. So we see every single day. Just yesterday, the Texas state capitol was uh, invaded. The trans protesters went there. We see women being attacked at women's rights rallies, physically attacked, and we're seeing this trans activist movement pushing um, for gender affirming care on kids, which is basically putting. 11 12 year old kids on very harmful hormones so that's what i'm talking about when i talk i'm not generalizing every single trans person i'm talking about the current trans movement which has been hijacked by trans activists and you know i really think that trans people that have been living as a trans person their whole life they need to speak out against this because the problem is that the lgbt community is being hijacked by these well, that, uh, radical let, let people me ask, uh, sorry i don't want to cut you off but i just want to mm -hmm. address things you said already right so you say mm -hmm. that the uh people who were demonstrating at the text bro ethan is so good at this shit part of this trans movement who wants to he don't you know, need my help sexualize at all. kids and this whole uh, list my of name? things um they were there to protest a bill sb14 that would ban gender related treatment for minors so um these guys are i guess see that as an affront as being transphobic, but uh, you disagree because what is minor? Anyone 17 and under? Do you believe that ever there would be a 17 year old that needed gender affirming care? Um, so minor is basically classified. These people were protesting against was the fact that Texas is trying to pass a law to ban um, hormones and puberty blockers and gender reassignment surgery being administered to children, basically. So, you know, I think these people, firstly, you know, that was an unlawful protest. You can't just go into a state capital and do that. You are know, you and if favor, they want to have a different... Are you in favor of only lawful protests? For the record, this is Ethan's greatest enemy yet. Because every trans, anti-trans uh, activist is like has encyclopedic knowledge of, of every fucking minor infraction that trans people have ever committed. So this is the highest level of debate that he's ever engaged with. I'm going to be honest. It's like, it's like debating a flat earther. It's very difficult to debate flat earthers, no matter how much you know the science, because they can constantly trap you in their junk science, and they know more than you in the junk science. So transphobia is kind of like that, Probably too. Probably no, or I think you did <laughs> at one point, is that uh, gender-affirming care on people, on children, is exceedingly rare. It's actually so rare that it's um it's it if to express like irreversible gender changes on children is something like you know uh i've got the number here 0.000493% of us children aged 6 through 17 go through irreversible gender uh uh changes so i i guess i'm just curious because in, in the cases where they do undergo it, it's usually uh, to save their life, right? Because they're probably, they might be suicidal or, or yeah, right? And, th and they go through like panels, they go through multiple rounds of talking to psychiatrists and doctors.
So, so I guess I'm just curious, why is it you think that this is threatening kids instead of actually helping kids who are at high risk of uh, hurting themselves? So, Ethan, about 10 years ago, when gender affirming uh, care was performed on whether that was minors or adults, there was a lot of checks and balances. Now it has become so easy. So they don't have the psychiatrist appointments anymore. They don't have, you know, having Wrong. to wait several years to transition. Now it's Wrong. a fast track process. And that's the real issue, because many of these teens and we're seeing thousands of teens uh, being transitioned and put on hormones. The numbers really gone up in the last few years. Now, many of these Wrong. teens are struggling with other issues. There's a, a high case um, around one in six of these children have autism. They're being misdiagnosed. There's also kids with. Um, you're, the way you look and the way you sound plays a serious role in how you're perceived in debates. And Ali London looks like shit. So, like, it's very hard for people to take uh, him seriously. You know what I mean? It's just like, he just looks so fucking insane because he is. He's unhinged. He's an unhinged psychopath. The system is being exploited. Like, he was, like, uh, he was trying to be, like, transracial or some shit. Remember? There's, like, there's so many examples she's not going to work. People. But the thing is now is, you know, previously, as difficult as it was, because it's so hard when you're trans to struggle and to think every day that I'm trapped in the wrong body. It is horrific to go through that. But the problem is, you know, years ago, they would have two to three years they would have to undergo a psychiatrist appointments, doctor. Ethan should go, wait, you, you transitioned years ago. What does that say then? So easy. And there are thousands of kids being fast tracked and put on hormones prescriptions. And some kids can now go to states um, like Colorado or Washington state, which have become sanctuary states. And they don't I, I want to I want to actually them. address what you said about them. Um, you had said something about Jamie Reed's allegations, mm. right? But th that was debunked, right? Because the parents and the uh, the children there who actually were uh, attending that facility actually told a completely different story. Have you read their account of that? Yes. So I saw okay. recently that the they did an internal investigation. They said it wasn't true. But no, I don't oh, that, believe well, that. Well, that seems significant. Uh, yeah, oh! but I don't so believe that is... at all because right. you don't they're trying to cover the... their back. You don't believe the internal investigation. No, because there were multiple parents when the Daily Caller originally did the interview of Jamie Reed. There were multiple parents that said basically their kids weren't looked after. Once they left the clinic, there were no checks and balances. And there were parents confirming that. So, you know, I believe the investigation has a lot of bias because so, it's done by the clinic and they're profiting. So the cl so the internal investigation said uh, there was no uh, there was no wrongdoings. The patients said there was no wrongdoings. So I guess I'm just curious, uh, the people who are claiming that there was something wrong there is like the Daily Caller, Tucker Carlson. Are you are you saying that they don't have a bias? Well, I mean, a lot of people have a bias and stuff, but, you know, we have to look at these gender clinics as a whole. Project Veritas exposed multiple clinics the other day of talking about medically transitioning eight to 11 year olds. So He's, we have to acknowledge that so good. this is going on in a lot of clinics and a lot of these clinics are trying to cover their backs by trying to paint a rosy picture that it's perfect. Did you it's say fine. Project Veritas? <laughs> yes, they did an undercover yeah, that's investigation. The guy, uh, that's the guy who got ousted for being like a sex criminal and like scam artist, James O'Keefe. That's his organization, right? Um, he's not part of that organization now. So the yeah. organization that he left, um, Project Veritas, the original organization, did this investigation. They don't have a lot in, of credibility, uh, Veritas. It seems like every investigation they do is just chock full holes of... Uh, untruths and just blatant lies. I don't think it, it's a very credible institution for pulling data from. Well, there's multiple organizations like Project Veritas that do expose Which other this. Ones? Um, <clears throat> um, so Gays Against Groomers, I'm ambassador for them. They are Gays also exposing groomers. this happening in clinics. Mm -hmm. Gays Against Groomers? So who's... Have you heard of them? I haven't, but who's the groomer then? Um, so basically, Gays Against Groomers is an organization of hundreds of LGBT people. It includes trans people as well. Basically, these uh, this organization is calling out the harms. Uh, they're doing investigations of gender. That's also a lie. Gays Against Groomers is like literally started by a straight man. Where's we the get grooming coming, though? That's the part that I find like really inflammatory because grooming implies that <laughs> trans people are trans activists. And it's what you said here in this tweet, that they're pedophiles, that they're sexualizing kids. So where does that evidence come from? Because it's one thing to say we're against, you know, uh, uh, gender affirming care for minors. Mm -hmm. But it's a whole different thing to say 
you know, they're grooming. Well, that word is basically used because we're seeing many um, uh, drag shows, like adult drag shows, where kids are attending, and it's very sexually explicit. So that is a form of grooming. We also see um, these kids' books in public libraries and in schools where they're teaching kids about drag and being trans. You know, that's not a subject a kid should hear. So that is a form of grooming because it's indoctrinating kids. I've heard, Mm -hmm. I know that there was that one uh, drag show with kids that was kind of a hot button issue. Um, Mm. Where, what other examples uh, can you think of of drag shows with kids uh, involved where they're being groomed? So there's, um, in the last year, there's a an investigative journalist, Taylor Hansen. He's exposed at least 20 drag shows in Texas that are, oh, really? are called 20? all ages drag shows. Uh, they're called all ages drag shows, and they're basically doing sex acts on stage. They have uh, breasts. You know, they're doing very inappropriate things. So, no, it's just... So, hold on. Sorry, Ollie. You're, you're, you're making so many claims, and I just want to get to each one. Uh, you mentioned mm-hmm. an organization, Gays Against Groomers, which yeah. was founded by Jamie Mitchell. Is that right? Mm-hmm. So, Jamie Mitchell and their partner are ultra-maga Trump followers, and there's nothing wrong with uh, being a Trump supporter, but they're also anti-transgender. They spread anti-transgender propaganda with QAnon conspiracy theories, and and interestingly, the founders are straight. So how is it that they can make a gays ah! against a group ah! organization when they themselves are not even gay? That seems disingenuous. Well, firstly, that's a Wikipedia page. You know, Wikipedia has a lot of bias with the um, woke um, people that so write. Jamie on Jamie Mitchell Actually, is gay. She's gay. She's a lesbian. All of the people you have to be LGBT to be a member How do they um, check of Gays Against Groomers. So there's how do they, uh, how do they of trans verify people. the credentials? No, I mean, you know, if someone says they're they're gay or bi, you know, you accept that. You don't say, oh, can you prove that you're gay? How can you prove that? So, I mean, you know, Jamie Mitchell is a lesbian. All of the members are lesbians, trans. It's not anti-transgender at all. They support people being trans as an adult, but what they're trying to do is calling out the harm that we're seeing um, caused to children, and that's the real issue here, is about protecting kids. Yeah, tell that so to the Turkish go military. Go back to your claim about grooming. So you, you brought up uh, the drag show for kids. Um, mm-hmm. Is there any other examples, or are we just talking about drag shows? Because I have to assume that the drag shows, even if it's as widespread as uh, v- Project Veritas claims, which heaven knows... Uh, how credible they are. Uh, there's got to be other examples to to make such bold claims as that there's a whole movement trying to sexualize kids. Yeah, I mean, even if you look at the music industry, you have really shocking performances like Sam Smith, for instance, who is um, pushing a specific agenda. He has concerts which are allowing all ages. And, you know, if you want to be a musician, do whatever you want, but don't be doing sexually graphic things. He's doing uh, imitating blowjobs. He has, you know, fetish gear on and there's kids in the audience. So it's not just about drag queens. It's about protecting kids in general. So even if it's even if it's Cardi B, you know, I don't think kids should be at a Cardi B concert if she's twerking or doing like something very, very sexual. I you think it's just about protecting grooming. kids. I mean, but, you know, you you turn on the TV. I mean, you see stuff worse than that, right, on YouTube mm-hmm. and stuff. I, to say yeah. they're grooming them seems pretty pretty disingenuous and actually really homophobic and transphobic to put this label that they're groomers because you understand the gravity of such a claim right well it's a very loaded word i i get that but it's not an attack on the lgbt community at all it's about basically calling out specific cases it's not an attack on trans people calling out specific cases where children are being exposed to something that's highly inappropriate and trying to raise awareness of that so it's not a label that's attached to gay people, lesbians, trans people. It's literally about calling out. I think more people should utilize the Mrs. Doubtfire argument, like I, uh, I, as I like to call it. Do you think Mrs. Doubtfire it was grooming an entire generation of like children to be trans? Gross. They were selling. It was like a kids' T-shirt with a trans person on it, and then they had like kids' toys with trans people on it, and it was kind of gross and groomy. Have you seen anything like that before? You know, I've seen T-shirts that the um, lieutenant governor of Minnesota wore, protect trans kids with a knife on it. You know, Mm. things like that. I've seen T-shirts that says protect trans rights with AK-47s on it and stuff. And, you know, I don't think that's helpful messaging for. And that's just trans activists, by the way, Ethan. This is a small number of people. And that's who I'm calling out. That's who gays against screamers are calling out. It's not the the trans. The Mrs. Doubtfire argument is not to, like, own your interlocutor. It's to make 
look at. Your interlocutor look like a fucking uh, psychotic woke scold from the right, of course, uh, to uh, onlookers. You are actually selling kids' lunchboxes with a picture of you depicted as a trans woman, and you're selling it. No, that's not as a trans woman. Oh, that's it's not, not. As a trans woman. That's just a K-pop picture of me. Okay, because this is you. <laughs> I, I had a feeling you would say that because here it is you wearing that design, and it's pretty obvious to tell that this is depicting you. This is yeah, from correct. just like a month ago, and this is when you were trans. Wearing my merch. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, do you think it's appropriate to sell this to kids? Well, it's a lunchbox with a picture of a K-pop cartoon. There's well, it's you as a trans. It's you as a trans woman. It's me as a K-pop star. It's nothing to do with being trans or not. That's just a cartoon of me as a K-pop star. So it's not, but at the that's not inappropriate. Right, but at the time, you were a trans woman. <laughs> Correct. At the time, I was a trans woman, but so that, there's nothing inappropriate So it's you as that. a trans woman. Oh, she's, uh, he, he's about to be like, yeah, I was a groomer. <laughs> to pick me as a trans woman, it depicts me. He's about to be like, yeah, I was a groomer back then. I'm not anymore. You're willing to... Uh, Make that separation when you're making such general claims about uh, groomers and stuff. Because to me, by your own definition, this is pretty groomy. And even if you go, and this is it's all an on, innocent picture. Well, hold on, it's Ollie, hold on picture. one sec. Even if you go on your website right now, you're selling the same graphic, un Ollie London, Ollie Merch Squad, as you depicted as a trans woman. And if you look at the available sizes, it's just kids. Three to four. Do you think it's appropriate for a three to four year old to buy this shirt? Yeah, of course. Any K-pop fan, if they want to buy my merch, they're absolutely entitled to. There's nothing inappropriate with that merch at all. It's a <laughs> that is a trans user. woman, Ollie. You're not understanding You're your own logic. You're clutching at straws. How am That's I? A, you a were a trans. Okay, hold on. Let's let's follow this through. You were a trans woman when you made this. There's a picture mm -hmm. of you wearing it. It's obviously yeah, you correct. as a trans woman. Here's you as a trans woman, and here's you as a trans woman on the shirt on a kid's shirt. How am I clutching at straws? Well, you're clutching at straws. It's an innocent cartoon. It doesn't say anything about indoctrination. The tongue children. is it's somewhat sexual. How the tongue is out like that? It's a little disturbing. I'm Ethan. Come on, I'm doing a K-pop pose. That's you're just clutching at straws. No, why is the tongue out? I find that a little uh, provocative. Ethan, it's a cartoon. You're just trying to trying to make. Well, a joke I don't out know because you're well, well. No, I'm not trying to make a joke. I think this is a somewhat serious issue to resolve here because <laughs> if you no, I'm being serious, Ollie, because let's at least be consistent. If we're going to accuse people of grooming kids, you know, and, and which you have made a, 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 a short lived but uh, a somewhat profitable career of doing, then I think we need to, uh, you know, uh, we need to get on top of this. Uh, I just don't think it's appropriate to be selling well, lunch boxes that, with a trans if, woman if on that it. Lunch box if, Ethan, if that lunchbox had something inappropriate or sexual, that would be wrong. But this is an innocent cartoon of me doing a K-pop pose. There's nothing wrong with that particular picture. If it was an inappropriate or in a sexual way, that would be completely wrong. And of course, I would never sell that. But that's an innocent drawing of a cartoon, Ethan. Do you think it's appropriate for a drag queen, for kids to buy, let's say a kid's at a drag queen show. That's grooming. And let's say they are selling lunchboxes to the kids of a dra with a picture of a drag queen on it doing a cute pose or whatever, right? Not sexual, but they're in drag. Do you think it's appropriate for a kid to carry that lunchbox? Well, I think it's appropriate if the kid's at a drag show that's inappropriate because some drag shows are generally not inappropriate. Okay, a lot so, of them are becoming Okay, sexualized. that's interesting. So some drag mm -hmm. shows are appropriate and some aren't. Correct. It's about okay. doing some... No, correct. It's about if you're going to do anything in front of kids, it should be... Uh, PC, it should not have anything sexual, but sadly, a lot of these shows are doing sexual things, so kids should not be there. If, if their merch is there and it's a show that's sexual, they shouldn't be there in the first right. place. Okay, this is interesting. So you're saying it is okay for kids to go to drag shows? I'm not saying that at all. I don't think they should in, in general, you but just, I'm just saying... If, if they're not sexual, and I, I would assume it's not because it's for kids, right? I mean, if they're doing sexual stuff, I would consider that obviously everyone would consider that uh, inappropriate. Mm -hmm. But I believe you've just said drag shows are uh, safe for kids. In fact, you would no, even yeah, be okay. Yeah. Well, hold on. You would even you even said you'd be okay with them carrying a drag show lunchbox. 
No, look, I just don't think kids should be anywhere that is putting ideas into their heads. You know, if a show is innocent, you know, that's obviously better than it being a sexual show. But I still don't think kids should be exposed to gender ideology. So, but so, what about this you know, lunchbox kid, you're selling to kids? That has nothing to do with any kind of ideology. It's a K-pop picture. So yeah, but you're in drag I, in the picture. You're you're you are, I mean, you're you're trans. I'm not in drag. Well, you're trans. Sorry. Yeah, you're right. You're not in drag. I misspoke. You're trans. You're a woman. You're expressing yourself as a woman on the box. I'm just, it's just a cartoon, Ethan. I don't know why you keep going on about it. It's a cartoon. It's just a cartoon. I mean, I, I feel like you're trying to downplay the significance of this, Ollie. I, I just afraid <laughs> that some of your, uh, co- some of the people that you associate with might consider this grooming by your own uh, standard. I'm just looking out for you and your reputation. It's just silly, Ethan. It's, a, it's an innocent cartoon. If it okay. was an inappropriate picture, that would be wrong. Okay. What do you make of this picture? Uh, are these kids in are these kids in danger? Your thoughts? Well, I haven't seen the video of that particular show, and it depends what book they're reading. If the drag queen is, it teaching appears to them about be depicting ideology. some fish. It's a couple of fish in the ocean. It seems like that's the rainbow fish. The rainbow fish. Uh, it seems to be the rainbow fish, Ollie. Well, it, it, you know, I think a lot of these books are pushing even subtle messages on gender ideology, trying to tell kids you should tra- be trans and become LGBT. And kids should make that decision on their own. So if that book is teaching them about, you know, transitioning <laughs> or becoming a drag queen, that's inappropriate. It's and that's the rainbow the fish. With... Yes, but I haven't read the book. I can't see what the book is. So based on that one picture, does that book contain subtle messaging that's trying to tell kids to change their gender when they shouldn't be thinking about things like that. And, you know, in Florida, they've obviously banned books um, in the classroom that teach gender ideology. And there's a lot of books, uh, kids' books. There's a book called The Gay ABCs, and that pushes gender ideology. From For two-year-olds, it's two-plus. And I don't think that's appropriate for a kid that just should be reading kids' books that are completely innocent. They shouldn't but even be... But what do you make of this? Kind of what do you make of this lunchbox, though? Why do you keep going back to the lunchbox? Well, well, because, literally... well, because, because you know, <laughs> it's got a picture of a trans woman on a kid's lunchbox. Got a picture of a K-pop star on the lunchbox. Who's the K-pop star? <laughs> Who, who's the K-pop star? It's, it's you, right? It's me. You, yeah, it's you. you, a, and, you and this K-pop star is a trans woman, right? I was trans at the time. The, the right. image doesn't necessarily depict any did kind the, of gender. Did, it just... So you're saying, did the photo of you... Uh... Uh, so it's, it's, not even even it's not even a photo of me. It's literally a, it's a cartoon. cartoon. I had right. an a- anime cartoon drawn of me. Right. <laughs> right. Um, Would you okay. buy it? Sorry. Would you buy it for your kids? I mean, Would I wouldn't want. I, I I wouldn't just because I don't want to support you financially. I've been listening, by the way. I'm but, just sitting uh, up the bed. But theoretically, I I don't think I'd have a problem with. No, I wouldn't have a problem with my children. Uh, there you go, uh, Ethan. So this is what trans. I was gonna say. The one issue with like by your logic style arguments is that you have to clarify like like that you don't actually have an issue with Ollie London selling this. It's that he has an issue with it, but he himself is also a grifter. Cool even elementary school, when they shouldn't be thinking about that. I think it's wrong to expose them to that. I think it's them. Also, airtight argument from Ali. Uh, that's not me as a trans woman. I'm a K-pop star. Okay, dude. Like, but, but, but No, but I think it's a really uh, important point that you're not <laughs> good one, you know, coming good to one, Ali. I'm sure. I'm sure everyone is going to think you're a K-pop star. That's a great one. Why is it still on your website, at least, you know? You know, it's, it's, come on, Ethan. I don't know what to say. It's a cartoon of a K-pop right, star. Right. Yeah. It's very innocent. Yeah, it's just yeah like no, a, that's infallible. Uh, yeah, no, that's, that's the best defense, man. You, know, you got trans it. Trans kids on there. That would have a message. That would have a loaded gender ideology message. But it literally says Ollie Squad with a cartoon of me doing the peace sign. It's like super cute, super innocent. Just like most K-pop stars are like super cute, you know? There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, aren't you making like the he, the uh, he go face a little bit? Well, do you think I should make it more masculine? No, the Higo face is like some kind of hentai thing, isn't it? I have no idea. Bro That's said Higo face. A Higo, you fucking oh, really? lack of pervert. Well, you don't, you know, don't know what? It's not Higo, it's a Higo. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. He's not you perverted enough. Face? Uncultured. No. I don't believe you. Come on. I watch Attack of the Titans That's and stuff. That's straight but cat, my brother. With... This is it, and you can see the resemblance, right? Here's the Ahigo face. Go on. It's from, it's like a hentai reference. But okay. You, but you see the resemblance, right? <laughs> can you put them side by side? Sure, yeah, I'd be happy to. 
I mean, that's quite a cute drawing. Right, but that's like a woman like orgasming is what that is. Well, or like well, lust. It's pitch. like a lustful <laughs> kind of uh, sexual gratification. Ethan, you're phase. really clutching at straws. Am I'm I? Literally, like I've got my eyes open. I'm doing the peace sign, and what you're is... trying to dissect it and say this honestly. <laughs> right. It just seems to me that even as a trans person, it, you shouldn't be exposing kids to that. It seems like you're shoving gender ideology down kids' throats by selling them a lunchbox with a trans woman on it. You don't like. You don't I see my don't... point at all. You don't get it. No, I don't. You know, if it, I, I would see your point completely. If, for instance, it had um, messaging on there, like some political, because I don't think kids should be exposed to politics either. Um, you know, political or gender ideology message. If that was on there, that'd be different. If it was a sexually suggestive image, but this is literally an innocent cartoon. I've got my eyes open. I'm doing the peace sign. You could not get innocent. What do I need to do, even like to please people? Do I have to like close my eyes? Well, I personally don't necessarily have a problem. What What is your fascination with the eye wideness? I haven't said anything about that. About, about what, sorry? You said, what do I have to close my eyes? I didn't know what that meant. You kept mentioning about like the uh, eye wideness of how wide it is. I, I don't know why you keep bringing that up. No, I'm just saying that, look, in the picture, my eyes, it's got very, it's not even me, by the way, it's a cartoon, but the eyes are very wide open, right. like Ugly. glistening. It's a it's a I'm just saying like, what's wrong with having my eyes open? Like we're human beings. We have to have our eyes open. I don't know why open. you're like, talking it, about be eyes open. Would it be better if I close my eyes? Would it be better if I close my eyes? I don't know. I don't you know what that means, Ollie. Here's a reference to a uh, popular culture with the ahigo face. It's, you know, like kind of an e-girl thing. You're probably aware of that. Well, I'm not an e-girl, so I wouldn't know. <laughs> yeah, but you're on the Internet and it's from anime, which you seem to be. OK, but let's move no, on. I, you know, I do know I do know anime and stuff. I don't know anything to do with that pose. Literally, I've got my mouth open like this. Peace. Ethan, <laughs> move on from the ahigo, man. <laughs> He's still talking about the ahigo uh, face. Do it. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> yes. yes. Yes, girl. So are you, so the trans, but you identify as a male now. You're not trans. We're over that. No, I'm like, well, basically I got to a point where I was going to probably die from <clears> the <throat> surgery I was doing. And, you know, I was really mentally struggling. Um, I had a lot of mental health struggles based on a variety of issues, which I talk about in my book um, from when I was being bullied very severely as a kid. Um, I was always told I was like ugly or I looked like a monster or, you know, I was more feminine or I had man boobs. Um, so you know, I just used to have all those things that left me with traumas. So it kind of messed up my head. And okay. as an adult, I didn't deal with that in the way that I should have. I should have had therapy. I should have spoke to someone. I Instead, it was almost like self-harming. So all this crazy surgery was me kind of um, kind of lashing out at the bullies. And it was very, very destructive for me and for other people. So, so you know, I'm, you I'm glad that's... to be over that. Do you think that people who are bullied are at a higher chance of becoming trans? Yes, definitely. So um, I talk about this in my book. There's a lot of studies. There was a study in Finland by the top transgender um, clinic that um, was basically transitioning a lot of kids. And they said around, I think it's around 45% of the kids had experienced severe bullying. So that led to their gender dysphoria um, identity, but so, there's so also your, the other your, side. Your where... theory is that the bullying leads to the dysphoria, not the dysphoria leading to the bullying, which no, would be was, more logical. I was, no, no, I was just about to say as well, but there is also the flip side of that, where kids that are the kids are being bullied because of their identity, you know, because maybe a boy is more feminine or a girl is more like a tomboy, so they're also being bullied for that. But in, in certain um, studies, the one in Finland at Tampere University, they found that there was a significant correlation between a kid being bullied <clears throat> and then the onset of their gender dysphoria coming afterwards rather than before. But, you know, of course, it works both ways. I mean, the type of bullying that Ollie London received was positive. OK, I'll, I'll say it like, yeah, no, people were like yelling at you and they didn't. They didn't bully you because you were trans. They bullied you because you're out of your fucking mind. Like, no one is out there being like, wow, Ollie Launder's trans. I mean, I'm sure there were some transphobic people that actually were bullying him. Uh, but, you know, those people are now his allies, right? <laughs> Most people, like myself, were looking at that and going, you're fucking out of your mind. Like, you're not Jimin. You're not him. You are not him. Okay. You can't be fucking Korean like that. It doesn't work that way, you dumbass. Hetero normality. I think I'm. That's my. That's so. So it seems to be saying the opposite, actually, of what you've claimed it said. 
Do you see what I'm referring to? Heteronormality. Yeah, no, I see that. I yeah. see that okay. article. That look who's you know, back, by the way. If you actually read the full study, which that's the conclusion. The study, you, you can find it on the National Institute of Health. Oh um, no, this is the study. Yeah, this let is, me have a look. Yeah, no, this is this is the uh, this is the study. It's the .gov. Yeah, Gov. Finland. Yeah. Yeah, this is it. Uh, and then this is the author's conclusion right there. I mean, that's pretty much that. This is the one you're talking about. Do you disagree? Yes, but it's look. The study's also saying it's associated with being bullied and being um, the perpetrator. So it's basically saying yes, that either, but the yeah. right, but the the message. This is the last sentence. So let's not let's read this together carefully. Mm -hmm. It suggests that bullying during adolescence may serve as a mechanism of maintaining heteronormality. So, do we understand what that says? No, I get what it's saying. It's basically right. saying that some of these kids that are being bullied um, will maintain their original identity because of the bullying. Correct. But the study also, if you read the full study, the study also speaks, there's a high correlation between, there's two different findings in the study. There's a study, there's a finding that around 45% of the kids are bullied and that causes the gender dysphoria. And there's also part of the study, which also says, like the conclusion is finding that some of these kids are bullied because of their gender dysphoria and it makes it worse. Oh, so there's, it, it there's it two seems different like findings. If, if two outcomes are possible, then it doesn't seem that interesting. I wonder why you bring it up. Well, no, uh, read, read the full study. It also talks about this the it, correlation man. between autism. I mean, this is the author. Yeah. They wrote the conclusion right here. This is their... That's 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 a small summary oh, on yeah, Yahoo that's News. That's the author. Read... That's the author. That's their conclusion. Correct. Right. But if you read in the Who National Institute... better to draw a conclusion than the author of the study? <laughs> no, no, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying... No, Ollie London. Uh, duh. But the author is gay or something. Fuck it from becoming um according to this bullying prevents more kids from transitioning do you believe that we need more bullying no i i'm an advocate against bullying i think whoever gets bullied it, it's so so wrong i've been bullied myself and i'm an advocate but if for bullying results in less transitioning then that sh then that according to what you're saying is the best outcome for these kids no i don't i don't agree at all no kid even if a kid is feminine or a girl is a tomboy they should not get bullied no one should get bullied they should be provided with support but if somebody wants to transition i'm notice notice how ollie's not talking about transitioning he's saying oh you're just tomboys all these kids are feminine. going through so many issues during that time they are not <coughs> in the right frame of mind to make an informed consent decision if a Look, child Ethan, is suicidal do you believe i personally think it's pretty funny that he got that fucking nose job and it's so busted that one of his nostrils literally doesn't move in the same way that the other one does and he's over here talking about how like you know uh, no one should get uh, uh, any kind of uh, gender affirmation care. Like, bro, you fix your own shit, okay? What the fuck is this? I told them your kids are going to commit suicide if you don't transition them. But what they said afterwards is they actually felt worse six months down the line after the transition because they've got hormones in their body, they've got puberty blockers, um, and, and they even had double mastectomy. That the vast majority of people that transition don't regret it. I think it's like ninety five percent, ninety nine percent. Are you aware of that stuff? You, you don't. You don't hear the cases of the detransitions. Are you the aware, gender Ollie? That ninety nine percent. No, no, that's not true. We only hear the detransitioners in comparison. I don't to support the... that statistic. I think it's okay. wrong because these uh, from, criminals... from what from what authority do you dis disprove that statistic? Well, the, look, these clinics make these studies. They don't even do follow-up studies. There's an example of a Do you not trust studies? Because you just told me to read one. Look, what I'm saying is the gender clinics make billions of dollars every year. Their studies are skewered and biased. In a they review of 27 studies involving almost 8,000 teens and adults who had trans transgender surgeries, mostly in Europe, U.S., and Canada, 1% on average expressed regret. For some regret was temporary, but a small number went on to detransition. Uh, but that's 1%. Uh, that seems like a very small amount to be uh, singularly focused on. And this is 27 right. studies. So this is a massive kind of conclusion, <laughs> right? Uh, a scientific conclusion, a, a consensus, if you would. Yes, but what I'm saying is there's a clinic, for instance, Tavistock Clinic, which was the main clinic in the UK. They were actually exposed. They were doing studies as well. They weren't bothering we were to check the with the detransitioners.
They didn't bother to check with the detransition. They didn't check how the hormones oh, were affecting over here. Oh, I know what you're talking here. about. That English one for for yeah, yeah. So that that one, if I recall, I looked into that. Um, I believe it was they. You know, people say it was shut down. It was actually, wasn't it? Um, it's being they, shut down, right? But still open. They're mm -hmm. making. They're actually making a bigger one so they can serve more needs. I, I actually. So it's not really being shut down, actually. Um, Tra that say the is, name again. It's still, what is it? Um, it's called Tavistock. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that one's actually being shut down this year because basically <laughs> the National Health Service, which is basically looks after all the hospitals in the UK for the government, um, they actually said that there were a lot of um, ethical violations and stuff, and they also changed their policy. It's funny to think that like Turf Island has any positive say on this matter. It, or or like uh, shutting down hospitals implies anything but like conservative austerity measures in place for the UK. Okay, one, they're horrifically uh, transphobic over there. Sorry, it's just the truth. Uh, and two, they're fucking shutting down uh, hospital care nonstop because of fucking Tory austerity. 27 studies. Then why did you tell me to read this one, Ollie? You use <laughs> studies when it's convenient for you. But you don't when it when it goes against your thesis. I don't understand your consistency with studies. Do we like them or no? <laughs> what I'm trying to say, Ethan, is the gender clinics are very, very powerful. Do we they no, no, no. control? Ollie, do we studies. like studies or not? All studies or no I studies? I like studies. Oh, we do. No, I like studies. You, you do like you studies. Have to, but you have to always look at bias. You know, the clinic in Finland was a transgender clinic that made the study. So they had different findings to the many of the clinics in America that are saying there's a low detransition rate. But there are thousands of detransitioners out there. They're just not sharing their stories because of fear of being attacked. And, uh, you know, they get abuse every single day from trans activists. So there's thousands of kids out there that are there's 50,000 detransitioners on a Reddit uh, subreddit forum. Uh, speaking about detransitioning, but they're scared to come out and talk about it because they're going to get attacked. So there's so, a lot of people hiding. You seem to be in denial, Ollie, that the vast, vast majority of these people, let's say there is a bias. Let's say instead of 1%, <coughs> it's 10% regret it. And that's a huge deviation. So I'm giving you a lot of doubt here. If 10% only uh, regret it, do you think that on whole... Of the 90% who, uh, who don't regret it and who had what they consider life-changing uh, care, health care, why would you seek to deny them life-changing health care? When they, well, Ethan, they, the yeah, they say, this saved my life. Well, Ethan, a children can't get tattoos. Children can't buy cigarettes or buy alcohol. So how on earth can they consent to doing something they don't <laughs> even understand about? We have to look at many of these kids. They don't understand. They don't think about the future. Like if a kid changes their body, they have gender reassignment surgery or take hormones. They might not be able to have a baby when they're older. They don't think about those things because they're kids. So the issue is just we shouldn't be doing this to kids. It should happen. You know, as an adult, they can make informed consent. But even with some of the parents. Agreeing hey, Ollie, to it, do you know, the, do you know how many kids between the age of. No, the counter to this. 17 went through irreversible surgery in the united states that that that's um, one counter, i know but the real the counter is every year. now it would be okay several thousand. so the number of patients of children between 6 and 17 who went through irreversible surgery in the united states uh what was the year uh, the years on that one it's uh three years 2019 through two, uh 2021 so this is the most comprehensive data we have and this comes straight from the uh the government stats it was 250 per year does that seem significant to you uh, that's completely incorrect because there Based are there's a clinic in oregon, <laughs> it's it's in the thousands now there's a clinic in oregon that's done at least the thousands is that significant a thousand i mean we have 50 no, no, million children thousand. in the united states do you think a thousand well, yeah. is, is statistically significant there's thousands and, and uh, this study probably only takes into account this is one counter the other counter is uh, not only is it statistically insignificant and you're making a fucking mountain out of a molehill, the other counter always is, okay, what if you have a child, okay, who is in a situation where gender uh, puberty blockers are medically necessary? And then he'll say, no, that's not the case. That's like trans people, blah, blah, blah. And you go, okay, again, contraceptives and certain kinds of gender, uh, uh, certain kinds of hormone blockers are absolutely medically necessary for 
young girls, for example, that have uh, issues uh, related to their uh, issues related to their fucking genitals and shit. You know what I mean? You, you, it's still it's still medically necessary. Do you think that they should stop? Birth control in many instances could literally be life saving. It's not even just about. Uh, it's not even just about like, you know, kids are having sex and we need to make sure that you're uh, curbing back on teenage pregnancy. It is an absolute medical necessity for a lot of people, a lot of girls, especially. Do you think that that is appropriate or do you want to stop that? And if he says, yes, that is appropriate, that should happen, then you go, okay, well then why the fuck do you have a, uh, a say on other medically uh, necessary circumstances, do you think you should set the boundaries on what is considered medically necessary and what's not medically necessary? Or should we leave that standard up to the medical professionals, the healthcare professionals that have the welfare of the entire public in mind and aren't some fucking psychotic people who thought they were Korean three months ago? On the right, that they're turning our kids gay. That turned out not to be true. You agree? Are, are... Yeah, absolutely. Okay, good, absolutely good, good. So hold on to that. So now today we see the same graph going up of trans kids getting surgery or gender affirming care or whatever. So why is it that you today can draw a conclusion that was the same conclusion in the 50s that you disagree with that trans kids are being influenced societal to to become trans? It seems to be a glaring contradiction in logic. It, you know, it's not just... Wait, Ollie London isn't Korean? No, I know he's very convincing, but he's actually... I mean, his last name betrays him. He's he's Londonian. Yeah. The, uh, Ethan, there's now over 60 pediatric gender clinics that have opened <clears throat> within the last 15 years across the US. They weren't there before, so they are profiting from this. They're opening clinics because they know they can profit. Yeah. But when they push, you know... Yeah. It's really fucked up that like, uh, you know, there is psychiatric help for like, uh, or, or some kind of help for, for example, uh, people with autism. The, the number of kids with autism is skyrocketed. Hmm. I wonder why that's happening. Maybe, if, maybe it's because uh, we have better deten detection uh, measurements. And also on top of that, we have a better understanding of how to like uh, uh, allow people on the spectrum, autism spectrum disorder, to like uh, coexist in an you know in in a normal way with the rest of society. Uh, why is no, that no? No, it can't be that. It must mean something uh, result different. Result of it becoming more acceptable uh, in society. Is it the same um, curve, the, right? The, same curve. Uh, it, it's a huge curve, you know, and it's really in the last five years since um, TikTok came about. We're seeing so many. There's there's about well, two point two well, billion. Who, what what does it matter how they become aware of it? I'm telling you, it's the same curve. What I'm trying to tell you is that there are influences now that didn't exist 10 years like ago what? that are pushing kids. So, <laughs> secret, for instance, TikTok, there's so about 2.2. So TikTok is turning. It's like, Ali, you 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 thought you were trans. Like, the fuck do you mean, dumbass? Like, yeah, you yeah, did it, it before movies. TikTok. It was hippie movements. Uh, that wasn't accessible to the generation before them. I don't see the difference. What I'm saying is that kids are being exposed to influences that it didn't have before. Same you know, in the, the 50s. Kids are being on... Sorry? The same in the 50s. The kids who were coming out as gay were also exposed to things that weren't accessible to generations before them. Well, I don't, don't agree with that. They didn't have phones no. back then. Kids are now being pushed trends, and the AI algorithm recognizes a kid's vulnerabilities. Well, and music, they push videos. music uh, you know, popular music. Uh, yeah, music. Pop music always... is, well, pop mm -hmm. music was something that was, rock and roll was something that was new back then. Uh, mm-hmm. No, no, correct. And and you could also argue that um, in the 80s, more people came out because, uh, you know, music like George Michael was, um, you know, and, and songs about freedom. So and then stuff why and are you out concluding with... that TikTok is making people trans? I don't understand the logic. You just contradicted yourself. No, no. What I'm saying is in the last five years, there is an increase in gender clinics opening because they are exploiting um, these children that are being pushed trends. You know, there's a lot of lobby groups, Ethan. The Human Rights Campaign is a massive lobby group. They're going around. Ollie, you were trans push, before um, TikTok. Um, I've struggled with gender dysphoria for all of my before life. Before TikTok. Correct, but Yes, but my um, identity struggles came about because yeah. I was using social media too much. And, you but know, Ollie, you were born in 1990. You're not that much 
uh, younger than me. When I grew up, there was no social media. I don't believe you probably had social media until you were in your 20s, well into your 20s. Yeah, correct. And the reason I struggled with my identity was because of a bullying in childhood. But then I only transitioned as an but adult. But bullying in childhood, we, we established from the report that you told me to read that bullying in childhood results in less people transitioning. <laughs> Ethan's like, you. your bullying didn't take, Ali. You still went trans, brother. <laughs> <Is that again? laughs> the, the study you sent me yeah. about bullying, <laughs> the conclusion was that Bullying results in less people transitioning. <laughs> Ollie, it so didn't you take. What it's happened? A result of social media. <laughs> well, you didn't have social media. Then I'm, you said it was a result of bullying. Person. But this study you told me to read says bullying reduces the uh, the amount of people who who transition. So so how is it that you were trans before? What, outside of all of these uh, influences that are turning people uh, trans. Well, firstly, I'm I'm an individual, so I'm one person. So my experience is not reflective of every single person that becomes trans out there. But the, the thing is, I became trans as an adult because I really struggled with my identity throughout my whole life. And yes, I did get bullying. Every case is different as well. Some people are bullied because of their gender identity. Some people are not. Um, so every single case is different. But the reason I became trans was, you know, you, you know, you follow my journey, the Korean stuff. That was me trying to find myself and trying to, you know, fit in because I hated the way I looked. If, you're, then, if your journey is a personal one, which I totally understand, then what gives you the right to project your personal experience onto others? Well, I speak to detransitioners every day. I speak to parents. I speak to women. So and don't they you, are that, very that assumes a bias, Ollie. You're talking all day to detransitioners. We've also established, because we, I think, like studies, or I don't know if we decided, I think you said you like studies, because <laughs> 27 of them made a consensus that 99% of people that transition don't regret it. So if you spend all day talking to the 1% that do regret it, don't you believe that underlies a bias? Well, no, I don't believe it because I talk, really? I talk to all sorts of people. I talk to parents that have trans kids and, you know, they're trying to navigate through that. And the general consensus with everyone I speak to, because, no, I don't, I'm not right wing or left wing. I'm just very much in the center. I'm just trying to help people using my platform to try yeah, and help you're not people. right wing or left wing. You're just insane. This is, we shouldn't be doing this to kids. And they're generally and a, bad a concerted push over the last five years to medically transition children. If kids want to experiment, if a girl wants to be a tomboy, you know, okay, we, nobody has a problem with that. You know, if they want to become trans as an adult, that's on them. But the issue that I talk about every day, I talk with parents, I talk with all these detransitions, is when this happens to kids. That's the issue I'm speaking about. Right, it's but that's not so about rare. people being trans. Let me ask you another question, just to pivot a little bit. Mm -hmm. I'm one of the people that would say, Ollie London is... Yeah, this is this is what I was talking about. Do anything about. for attention. You have probably some kind of I don't want to diagnose you. I'm not a psychiatrist, but there is some craving for attention, clearly, right? Good or bad. I mean, you recent you said about like Korean, you said your pronouns were core Ian, you know. You said you were going to get a, your penis uh, size reduced so that you could look more uh, you could be a more th authentic Korean. I mean, these are not serious things. You seem to be a provocateur. Is it possible that you are participating in this right-wing grift because, one, it's making you a lot of money, and, two, it's getting you a lot of attention? Is that possible that you actually don't care and that your, your beliefs are empty? Is that possible? No, absolutely not. So when I struggled with my identity for years, I generally was struggling, and I was lashing out at bullies and... <laughs> The more, the more I would get bullied online by YouTubers and people on TikTok, the more I would act crazy because I was trying to feel validated and loved. And, you know, it was very well, the unhealthy. Con the even. conservative movement that. has offered you quite a uh, quite an open hand. Uh, they're very glad to be using you as a mouthpiece against trans people. So it must feel good to be being accepted from somebody, even if it is uh, at the detriment of many people who are at risk, trans people must feel nice no, to have people supporting you. No, it's nothing to do with that at all. You know, I, I could have easily continued doing K-pop. I could have focused on TikTok, which, you know, I used to really enjoy doing TikTok. I'm not the best singer. I like to make fun, entertaining videos. You know, I could have stuck with that. In actual fact, when I detransitioned, <clears throat> I lost so many brand deals. I lost, 
know, I lost all my invites to New York Fashion Week. I was front row. Every yeah, but season. now you're I on Tucker Carlson. No, he wasn't. When was he? What? No. Peace to the goat. That never happened. Yeah, he was the original guy. But no, it's, it's um, not to so, do with let, that. No. So you say it's not possible that you are just doing this for attention. If we go back, here's a recording of you saying that you're using the BLM movement for attention and for cameos. Here, listen. Millions. So it's basically every time I do a music video, it's like, if it's a million, it's a thousand pounds. So you know, if I just keep releasing music videos, that's like enough and then also because i've been a lot on twitter there's been so many people talking about me on twitter because i'm supporting the black lives matter and protests and stuff so i had 200,000 views on the video so because of that as well i'm getting a lot of requests so it's just is you he know, getting just, fucked right here what is what is this noise uh in the news on tv and stuff because you know the more exposure i have you know if i'm trending on twitter or whatever on tv then the more cameos i get so yeah just so here you say you're supporting blm to stay relevant and because it gets you more cameos what the fuck is that? What what is that? Videos, what is uh, that? Since you went uh, right wing. Well, firstly, that audio was from a number of years ago. It was. Where did, how did they record this? This is like panting. That was completely incredible. Um, and just well, basically desperate for attention. It's your voice, correct? It's my voice, but it was edited deceptively to try to make. Oh my god! Is it because his nose is fucked up? He can't fucking breathe normally. So I'm not doing any of this. What I'm doing now is to try and help people. You know. Previously, Ethan, I'll admit What's it. Previously, I had some very unhealthy me behavior. Deceptive. I'm open to hearing you out. How is it deceptive? Oh I'm, I'm explaining. God. So, you know, okay. previously I had unhealthy behavior where I was generally like thinking, oh, how many likes can I get? How many views can I get? Because I was in a really crazy mental health place. And, you know, I, the more surgery I would get, I'd the people feel say, about myself. So people I'm, saying he was walking or telling on themselves. I'm sorry. Normal walking does not lead you to breathe that way, okay, while you're talking. Ethan, Are you joking? If I wanted you're on the to, show. No, if I wanted to do, get attention and stuff, yeah. I would stick to doing TikToks. I would stick to doing my K-pop music well, You're videos. getting a lot more attention right now. I mean, you're getting a lot of attention right now. In fact, you wrote a whole damn book about it, Gender Madness. Well, what I'm doing now is because I've actually come to a realization that I have had some very unhealthy behaviors in the past, and I'm trying to remedy that. You know, because I can't sleep at night when I think, you know, have I done something bad? Have I been a bad influence? So I'm actually trying to remedy that and devote my well, I time to activism. I hate to tell to you, activism. if that's what you're concerned about, you're going to be feel really bad when your next phase comes around and you realize it's that you are the, phase, mouth, even, it's, the it's, mouthpiece for uh, really hateful people. Ethan, it's not a phase and I'm not a mouthpiece for anyone. I'm literally <laughs> it's not just a phase, trying to speak up about issues that I have finally woken up to see what's going on in the it world. It seems I'm to me, thinking, Ollie, that if we look at all of your different iterations of your personality, the one consistent thing is a need for attention. Oh, you could say that about Trisha Paytas, who was your best friend and you used to do a podcast. Oh, I do say that. I mean, yeah, I would say that about Trisha Paytas. Sure. <laughs> yeah, what? Are you like she Trisha had different Paytas? Identities, but but she, she had a wake-up call and then she realized that, you know, she could be an influence to others and she's really a positive girl. She's doing amazing things at the moment and... No, I had a wake Trisha up. Trisha was a well chicken I was... nugget, I believe. Uh, do you do you empathize with that, Ollie, as a former trans well, I, person? Ethan, I'm vegetarian, so I wouldn't empathize with her. Bigger, so you're so you're saying nugget. you're like, uh, yeah. And congratulations on that. We support that, Ollie. Do you do you believe you're like Trisha Paytas? No, not at all. I'm not comparing myself oh, okay. to her. I'm just saying that she had a lot of identity struggles. She had some unhealthy behaviors. I had some unhealthy behaviors. I struggled, but I'm remedying that now. I'm working hard every like day Trisha. to try and be a better person, to try and help people. And that's what I'm focused on. So people Good. can call me what they want. I'm not a mouthpiece for anyone. I'm literally trying to help. Okay, make let's the pivot. World a better place. Let's pivot. This came about when you found God, right? You uh, And you can fill in the blanks here. Um, you were confused. You were a transgender woman. You were selling uh, kids lunch boxes, depicting a trans woman on it. That's pretty low by your own definition. And then you were walking around and you found God. You entered a church and then you realized, hey, this is a cool vibe, maybe. Well, no, actually, before that, I was started to go to therapy. So basically, I lost a lot of my friends. People thought I was really like crazy. And I was. I was very mentally unwell with all of these different crazy identities that I struggled with. So I actually started therapy first um, and I started going to sessions twice a week. And then they actually told me, you know, you need to speak about this. You need to find a community that's uh, accepting, non-judgmental and kind. So hold so on. Your, your, I, your therapist told you that you're not trans? 
No, my therapist didn't tell me I wasn't trans, but they said if I'm having issues and struggling with who I am, perhaps I should uh, find a community that's very okay. welcoming and might make me feel like I can belong, okay. you know, take some time off social media. Okay. Um, so they didn't tell me not to be trans. It's nothing, nothing to do with that. So they you, literally told me to try and find myself. So you took a, so you took a break off social media and then you took your, well, no, you I, took the fountain, your time to find God and, uh, find your new self. I stopped, you know, I stopped, um, spending hours now. These weenies always have the same Dude, story was, you know, messing up my mind. And I actually it's left so, my phone. It's so stupid. It's so cliche. It's so boring. Like. You're creative enough to, like, come up with the most unhinged thing to do to your own fucking body. You can't come up with a better, like, you know, a better backstory. Like, it's always got to be at the top of the hour. I saw a three-minute ad break, and all of a sudden, I realized, like, I'm not subscribed. I will be seeing this three-minute ad break. And also, uh, I'm not Korean. Uh, I'm, I'm a white man. You know? It's, like, fucked up. Because at the top of the hour, there's a three-minute ad break. If you no longer want to see those ads, all you need to do is subscribe. Don't be like Ali London. You know what I'm saying? Subscribe and avoid the fucking ads. So you went from a Speed Razor, thank you for the five, get the subs. So hey, Bozo, thank you for the five, get the subs. Allowing 10 people to no longer see the ads at the top of the hour. You too can avoid it if you get gifted a sub. Here's the three-minute ad break now. Uh, when you said get off, uh, take your time and talk and figure out who you are, you, that all happened within a month. No, actually, since I uh, originally transitioned, I felt great for a couple of months. And then I Thank really you, started Harkness. to question it. I started to think, OK, I can even do more surgery to make myself physically become a transgender woman or I can take a step back. So I was having a lot of thoughts of regret, but it was yeah, too yeah, late Andy, at that point. Me, I'd yeah, already yeah, yeah. done Thank facial feminization. I'd already changed myself. I was very confused. So I'd been having those thoughts for a number of months. And then within a month from the, um, that I particular see. picture being taken, I, I actually did transition. So mm -hmm. tell me about finding God. Tell me about when you were in the church and you had like an awakening. Well, I'd, I'd lost a lot of friends. I lost a lot of loved ones because uh, they thought my behavior was very unhealthy. And, um, you know, it was a, a now or never moment. I could have continued down a very destructive path, destructive for myself and people around me and destructive for, you know, people that see me online. It's, I, I think I was, you know, not a good role model, and I, I deeply regret that. So, Were you trying um, to be a I role model? A... I find that interesting. No, I, 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 well, at the time, in my delusion, I thought I was a role model for people that liked K-pop and wanted to be um, a K-pop star. Size. But, um, so then I started going to church to try and uh, take some time out to think about my life and think, you know, what is the next step for me? And then you know, after spending some time going to church sessions and sermons, it made me realize, you know, just try to find acceptance with who I am and stop doing all this craziness and try to get back to the real me. And that's the most important thing. You, I've heard you mention the real you, the real you being uh, a British man. But if you talk to other people, I think they might say the real them. And as, as I think you would agree, People are born gay. They don't choose to be gay. Do you agree with that? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay. So then why? And I, agree, and I believe, sorry, I believe that some people generally feel trans since they're born. I do believe that. So, that, so God made them that, that way, right? So God would have made them that way. I just believe that some people are born as trans, but my issue is kids being indoctrinated to transition when they didn't think about that before. So however you're born, that's the way you, you feel then that's okay, but I don't believe in people that wouldn't think about these things being indoctrinated to change. <laughs> if you were British, you would do anything to escape it too. That's pretty funny. I mean, look, I, I'll, I'll just, I'll say something positive. Ollie London is awesome because normally there's a lot of fucking freak-like individuals out there that you would want to be making fun of, right, openly, but you kind of can't because... You know, you don't really know their background. You don't know their backstory. What if they've undergone some hardship or something like that? Whereas with Ollie London, he's an open book. So it's like it's like open season, really. Like, you can do whatever the fuck you want. He's just such a fucking cartoonishly monstrous individual that, like, you don't really ever get an opportunity to just, like, unwind and unload on a motherfucker. Uh because they're so demonstrably uh, uh, dedicated to being as harmful as possible to others. It's great. Up in your interviews, God makes people trans. I find that, I find that to be... I never, say, I, ne I never said God made people trans. I never said God didn't make people Does trans. Does God make people gay? That... Does God make people gay? 
I'm just saying that people are born in different ways. Because you said uh, you were born, you were born gay. And so I'm I was assuming... born. I wasn't born. I was born a man, and then as a teenager, I became gay. Um, so it didn't happen from birth. But I, I struggled with my. I was very feminine. I struggled with my identity uh, as a kid. Was um, that your so choice or that, God's choice? <clears throat> you know, there's a lot of influences that influence people in life. You know, God is all I powerful, right? Out, no, perhaps I wouldn't have turned out the way I did if I wasn't bullied, or perhaps is I God all have powerful? Yeah, God is very powerful. Yes, absolutely. All powerful. But, but is God all powerful? God is all powerful, but there are. So then he made you gay in... and trans people trans. No, there why are. Why would he make? Why lives. would God all powerful make someone so confused that they wanted to be trans? Well, actually, logically, it doesn't even make sense. If God is all powerful and He creates a, a being, and then this being lives through their lives and then says, "Oh, I want to transition," God made them that way they if god is all powerful it's all part of his design god wants people to be trans well there are societal environmental god factors created society that... i'm sorry kaya is so dumb she just put her entire paw in the water bowl before realizing she put her entire paw in the water bowl and pulling it out uh it's, it's just so unrelated Ideology. but what I'm saying is a lot of these people would not have felt this way when they're born, but they're being pushed by society. God created society. To, to think that they're going to transition. God created society oh. and transitioning as an operation. But girl. I mean, just tell, where am I logically wrong? I don't see any logical conclusion that doesn't come to the idea that God made people trans. I never said God made anyone trans. I just said that society and the environment God made society. around people influence people. He's all powerful, right? You said he's all powerful? Yes, God is all powerful, but also humans have influences on other humans. But he made humans. No, this isn't going anywhere. <laughs> it's not, is it? Okay, let's go on. Um, do you believe that the Bible is against transgenderism? Or what's your thought on that as a as a... I guess, a newborn Christian. Well, you know, the Bible was written um, a long time ago, and there are things in the Bible, such as in the Old Testament, that aren't relevant to today's society. We know that. Um, so we have to adapt what was written 2,000 years ago to the modern day. But, um, you know, I'm not, I'm not one for policing how adults live their lives. But I think, you know, transgenderism wasn't in the Bible because there weren't trans people <laughs> visible there were trans back people. then. Of course. No, no. Look, I've even got this in my book, even there was a Roman emperor that was trans. He used to dress as a woman. Um, so we know there's instances, but I'm just saying in the did Bible. Society itself, no him? Did society influence him? Did society influence the emperor to be trans? Well, I wasn't alive then. Well, but, hold on. Um, you wrote was, about it in your book. God dang, man. Yes, but so so there were some um, Roman scholars that were around at the time and taken from their writings. He used to dress as a woman. He used to act like a woman and his wife would have to call him ma'am. Now, I, I wasn't around back then, so I don't know the exact details, but he thought he was a woman. So, you know, maybe he, he could have been born like that. Some people are born like that, and they generally think that they're so, in the wrong body. So <laughs> you don't have an opinion on if the Bible. TikTok made the Romans gay, Ethan. Duh. What the Bible. fuck do you mean? God, it's so simple. The Bible was written a long time well, ago. Yeah, the then why, were... but, but surely, I mean, you know, uh, why use the Bible as a guide for anything in your life if, if it was written so long ago? I don't understand that point. Because, Ethan, because there's many teachings in the Bible that are very, very positive, uh, you know, about love and acceptance and kindness um, and trying to help. I wish humanity. you were there to um, dunk on him. It was written Not a long really. time ago. So like I said, Ethan's the doing a great job. There's also a story about this, now. like uh, sisters raping their dad. Well, that's what I'm saying. The Old we don't Testament like that has one. things. OK, I like your optimism. So we I'm take... saying the Old Testament. Oh, has we do, we're not doing the Old Testament. OK, cool. So we well, don't believe. OK, OK, OK. I heard you, when you're on these shows, I notice you talk a lot about um, this specific story of Jesus that inspired you, how he helped the lepers when no... Wait, great question to follow up here is like, oh, so you don't like the Old Testament? Do you think it's appropriate to teach the Old Testament to children? Sorry? <laughs> well, I thought it was a good analogy because I felt like um, for many years I was rejected by society. I was treated like an outcast, just like the lepers. So I thought it was a good analogy. 
to um, to me. Actually. I agree. Mm-hmm. It is a really good analogy. What other Bible stories do you like? Um, so there's the tale of the um, lost sheep um, in Luke, the parable of the lost sheep, where a sheep goes missing um, from a flock of 100. And the shepherd decides, should he stay with the flock or should he go and help this sheep? And he actually goes into the wilderness to help the sheep because he realizes that every sheep is one of God's children. So he needs to help them and be responsible for them. Which verse was that? I want to read that one. Uh, it's in Luke and Matthew. Luke and Matthew. Do you know the... The number i can't give you the exact chapter but you can look it up is there any other uh uh bible stories you like i'm looking for good recommendations yeah there's also uh, when jesus um met a roman officer and this roman officer had a lot of power but instead of you know abusing that power like many roman officers did he was actually kind to his servants he had servants that were captured um from battles and they were working in his house, but he treated them the same he treated everyone else. So that's another great analogy that, you know, Jesus looked at people and helped people that helped other people. And, you know, kindness is very important. Do you know the the verse on that one so I can reference it? I can't quote it off the top of my head. I don't know where that one is. But there's a lot of verses in the Bible. There's a lot of chapters, but I can tell you specific stories that I like. Okay. I was just testing you, Ollie. You know what I mean? I know, I know. I was just trying to test you. You know, I was trying to do a fast one on you. <laughs> this yeah, is but very I want to ask. Um, Look, this is a really good technique that Ethan engages in, not to be all JCS, but um, what he's doing is like he's openly admitting that he's behaving in like a like a manner and that he tested Ollie. He tested his interlocutor and and uh, giving confidence to his interlocutor by saying like, hey, I'm rewarding you. You actually did a good job. You withstood my test and you won this makes the the interlocutor feel confident and also feels like inadvertently uh they are on the side of the uh interviewer a cardinal that i believe he died um earlier this year an australian cardinal that was uh, accused of some horrific things and there's it's there's a lot of that going on as well so that needs to be addressed and i will call that out as well as well as calling out drag shows that are sexualizing kids because all forms of child abuse whether it's in a church whether it's in a religious organization <laughs> Or, or whatever what you, is wrong. If you had kids, would you feel more comfortable leaving them at a drag uh, time, story time, or with a clergy member? You know, if I had kids, I would actually be with them all the time. I wouldn't leave them anywhere. You would never leave them. No, because you know, as a well, parent, hypothetically, you're like, you know, you don't have to do it. I'm just talking hypothetically. <laughs> would you leave? Would you feel more comfortable leaving them with a clergyman, uh, a member of the of the Catholic Church, or at the Bible? Or, sorry, the drag queen story time hour. Again, neither. I wouldn't want to leave kids it's not, anywhere. It's just a theoretical. It's just theoretical. No, no, I, I get girl, that. But I'm just being saying, a bad girl. I, even, even if it was you know, leaving a right, kid Right, but you have age. to choose one. Which one do you trust more? See, I'm a helicopter parent, and you're watching exactly why being a helicopter parent is bad. She saw my mom uh, walk past. She got excited and was like, I want to go out there. That's my human shoe toy, please. And now she's behaving in a manner that I don't like. I have to leave my kids either with the clergyman or at the drag show. <laughs> I don't have a choice. Something crazy is happening. They're right next to each other. It says, ah, where do I leave my kids? Where do you think Barry should leave his kids? Well, again, I wouldn't want to leave kids anywhere. But he d- know, Barry doesn't have a choice. He, he doesn't have a choice. He's in this horrible but, predicament. But Ethan, I'm not Barry. I can't answer that question. Well, he's asking Barry. you for advice. Quick, Ollie, where should I put my kids? <laughs> You're putting me on the spot. You know, I, I wouldn't, uh, as an adult, like, I would say... Ollie. Barry- oh, sorry. Flick. I find it very concerning that you are hesitant to even answer that question. No, I'm saying it doesn't matter whether it's a, a Catholic church, a drag show or even an an after-school club where it's, you know, the teachers aren't present. I wouldn't leave the kid anywhere. I wouldn't leave the kid at some weekend activity, like a sports activity. I think the parents should always be there. Right. So it's not a question of the church versus, um, you know, whatever. It's a question of just, in general, parents should always be with their kids. But that's not reasonable. Parents can't always be with their kids. I mean, that's... No, uh, no, of course. Of, yeah. of course, it's not always reasonable. But I'm just saying in an ideal scenario, you know, because, uh, look, there are cases that, that happen, many cases that don't happen. But I'm just saying it's... You've always got to be careful because there are people out well, there that are Well, let's assume that you're a good Christian and you say, I'd leave them 
uh, with the Catholic Church. We've talked about the number of kids who are doing irreversible transitioning in America. It's very, very small. We're talking like 250 a year by my estimate. And that's based on government data. I know you, you uh, dispute it. You know, there's mm -hmm. a recent report that came out in France. And the reason I bring this one up is just because it's the most recent and comprehensive one. It's quite, mm -hmm. quite disturbing. Uh, this came out, I believe, in 2021 called the Independent Commission of, on Sexual Abuse in the Church. It uh, was a huge government uh, uh, commission to look at this openly and honestly and try to figure out what's going on. Uh, 2,900 and 3,200 clergy members were involved in sexual abuse of minors during that period in France, okay? Um, it's estimated that they abused around 330,000 kids. Now, if you do a percentage of that, and this is really kind of surprising to me, and tell me what you think. Assuming there are around 15,000 to 20,000 clergy members in France at any given time, the, percent of, the percentage of clergymen involved in abuse of minors would be 15 to 20 percent. Yeah, that's absolutely horrifying. And also there's in Ireland as well, there was a lot of abuse that was covered up. And no, it doesn't matter. Seems like that affects more kids. Than no, the that, that than the is directive. equally wrong. Whoever exposes kids, it doesn't matter whether it's a church or not. Raping a, church, a kid is equally is as wrong as going to a drag show? Look, it's equally wrong if someone abuses a kid. So that's what I'm saying okay. here. So if a kid is being abused... Is there any history of a child wrong. being abused at a drag show? When, when drag shows are sexually explicit... Is that the that same as abuse. raping them? I, that is also child abuse. I'm just saying if a, a drag queen performs a sexually explicit act in front of the kids, that is abuse. If we're worried about the kids, we're looking, you're a member of an organization, which by my estimate, which again, it's just an estimate, uh, but 15 to 20 percent of the clergy members are sexual predators. Why is it that you're focused on the drag shows and not the Catholic Church when per capita and the volume is way more in the Catholic Church. Well, the, the specific organization, Gays Against Groomers, is focused solely on the issue of indoctrinating children, exposing them to sex. If it was called, you know, Catholics Against Groomers, that would be focused on that issue. But it's a specific issue. Not every organization can focus on every issue, but their uh, job is to expose a specific issue within a specific group. And granted, like you said, there are in France, there was in Ireland some horrific cases. And, you know, it's the job of the Pope and the Catholic Church to vigorously investigate that because it's disgusting for any person, uh, whether a clergy member or not, to abuse a child. It's absolutely wrong and it should be investigated to the full. And every single victim It just deserves seems to justice. me a little disingenuous when you're going to point, let's say, you've got the whole hotel, a whole building, it's on fire, but you know, across, but in the backyard, there's like a dog house that's on fire. There's no dog in it, by the way. It's just a small structure. And you're telling the fire department, we need to put out the dog house fire. Don't worry about the fucking massive apartment building that's on fire. Let's put out the dog house. To me, that seems like you're focused on the wrong thing. What's the point of focusing on the dog house when the, you know, the whole building is on fire, right? Well, no, I mean, I talk up on my Twitter about all forms of abuse. If there's somebody that abuses a kid, you know, if there's a news story, I do share on that. So, but I'm just saying the specific organization, Gays Against Groomers, focuses on a specific subject. But you're right, all forms of abuse are incredibly wrong and they should also get uh, light shed on them 100%. Are you interested in uh, firearm deaths in, of kids? Because that's the leading death, actually, of kids in America today. Yeah, that's absolutely horrific. What we what we see every day with schools being shut up, it's absolutely horrifying. Right. But somehow the drag children, show no, is children more... should be you know, Ethan, we're on the same page. I just children don't understand why the drag show is more pertinent because you're doing a tour, right? You're doing all the right wings. You even wrote a book for Pete's sake called Gender Madness. Why is this topic um so important when we're talking about protecting kids and there's just these incredible more pertinent issues uh you know firearm deaths the leading cause of death in kids and you're talking about an organization with 15 to 20 percent of sexual predators 
by my estimate. I just don't understand the focus on the drag show. Don't you think that the conservative I, uh, movement is overly focused on transgender issues? Uh, well, I mean, there's, there's, uh, you've just highlighted there are so many different issues in the world. And, you know, I'm trying to focus on one specific. What is this interview? Beanie Dude is rapid fire and gotcha scenarios to try and catch this dude off guard. It's really inane. Whatever your view on the topic is. No, he, I think he's doing a great job for that particular reason, actually, uh, as a matter of fact. Like, that's, it comes across as gotcha questions because, again, it comes across as gotcha questions because he's doing a good job. The only reason why you're saying it's gotcha questions is because it's doing a good job and you kind of, like, don't like his vibes. You might even uh, end up agreeing with the other party a little bit, but you can't find yourself agreeing with that party because he's, like, very clearly delusional. That's the issue. That's why you're saying like, uh, oh, it's a gotcha question. No, he's just doing a good job. God, why are they all so focused on trans issues? Well, I mean, they talk about a lot of other issues as well, but what's happening at the moment is there is a lot that, of... Um, right, they talk about a lot of issues, but I think we can all agree that that is... Uh, that's kind of the most pertinent it, for them, right? Even in it, polls, it's a very, yeah, even in polls, people say uh, trans, trans issues is the most important to them of conservatives. Why is that? Well, I mean, I mean, correct, because it is it's a very... It's great because Ethan does a really good job of, like, one, like, he is the representation of, like, libtard politics, right? Um, And even as, like, the, the representation of that kind of politics, like, he does a really fucking good job of ridiculing his opponents by simply asking questions, while also even admitting his own bias in many different uh, respects, even saying, like, oh, well, I was trying to catch you, and he did a really good job of, like, avoiding it, you know what I mean? Like he 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 does a very good job of like just winding down your opponent and and actually offering them enough rope to hang themselves with. Uh not in the way that like people say that Joe Rogan does, but actually doing that. Because Joe Rogan doesn't have that uh, ultimate goal of like giving their opponent enough rope to like hang themselves. Joe Rogan has a very clear-cut bias and it's on the uh, uh, you know, it's on the side of the people that he's uh, having on like the the right wing. Uh, agitators. Okay. So how do you just, if I haven't mentioned it, how do you justify this? I've already gone through it. Oh, we have talked about it. Okay. Okay. I'm just curious. Let me look at the photos. I mean, this is definitely for kids. It's pretty small. I can't even fit like a little bread in it, barely. And like, look, how, <laughs> I mean, these blueberries look monstrous next to that. That's certainly for kids, right? <laughs> yeah. It's too small it's for just an adult. What's that? No, it's for anyone. Anyone that likes K-pop. For anyone that likes K-pop, but grown-ups. Can you explain to me who's going to school under the age of uh, like over the age of eighteen? Like you, you know, using a lunchbox. Like that. Wait, you would buy like a lunchbox with a trans woman on it? Why would you do that? It's a K-pop. It's an image of a K-pop. I would buy it because it's cute. You know, I like K-pop stuff. I love Korean culture. It's it's a cute K-pop lunchbox. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But clearly, you're not going to be buying. If this is real, I'm closer to Taylor Swift than Cutie Cinderella twice in my life now. Dysphoria. I mean, that's a real issue. But Ethan, what I'm trying to say is if you put a vulnerable kid that's already struggling with a mental health on very high doses of hormones. Maddie Healy is a, is a fan of certain center left uh, podcasts, uh, including center left commentators such as myself, uh, center left podcasts such as uh, Come Town and uh, center-left uh, podcasters and broadcasters such as myself. Has that ever happened? Has a child transitioning ever saved a child's life? Well, you need to address the mental health issues if a kid is Has it ever that saved way. a child's life? Uh, right. and did I say Comtown? Yeah. Fuck, Comtown is not center-left. Comtown is actually uh, progressive-left. Uh, this is uh, the new show... The Adam Friedland Show, which is totally unaffiliated with the Come Town. What is Come Town? I don't even know what Come Town is. I fucked it up. I'm so Transitioning sorry. Transitioning saved their life. Even one of them. Why would you support a movement that outlaws it? You support because legislation these, that makes it illegal. Why is that? Because firstly, these are kids. They cannot consent to this. They do but not save understand their the long-term consequences. But you don't look at what happens later down the line, even you like said, six uh, years uh, down Ollie, the line. We got to stick on this point. You said that transitioning has saved a child's life. Let's no, forget I'm, about I'm all the other static. Let's forget about all the other static. Why is it that you would want to outlaw uh, a, a, a medical procedure that saved a child's life? 
That's because not kind, is it? No, you have to support the kid's mental health, but you cannot put them on hormones. Do you believe that it should be illegal? Surgery. Do you believe that it should be illegal for kids to transition? I believe for medical transitions, it should be 18 plus, yes. Even if the kid is going to kill himself, as you admitted, the kid, it saved the child's life. You said that. So, so you believe I'm this kid should kill themselves rather than transition? Absolutely, absolutely not. Don't try to put words in my mouth. Uh, well, kids I'm just, need mental okay. health. No, I, I'm not trying to put any words in your mouth. I'm just trying to reconcile. You are saying, on one hand, that transitioning saved the kid's life, and also saying that transitioning shouldn't be allowed until they're 18 plus. So this child has no about... recourse other than to kill themselves in this hypothetical Ooh. situation we've created. In this hypothetical situation, instead of that, actually take the kids um, to somewhere that's a safe place where they can be surrounded by friends. Right, they do that. People. But again, I don't want to focus on the static because this is a real situation. And let's say even if it's just one kid, again, let's let's stay focused here, Ollie. One kid saved his life. You're telling that kid you cannot get that procedure. That's correct? I'm saying that kids can't consent to this. Kids need better mental health support, so there should be a focus on 18 mental plus. health You're saying this kid cannot get the procedure transition. that saved his life. That's what you're I'm saying. saying that it should, I'm saying that 18 plus for all procedures on kids because kids cannot consent, so they need mental health support instead. Well, kid, right. So the kid would kill himself. No, you give the kid. But then why did you say that it saves them. kids' lives, Ollie? Don't you understand? You're I'm, not making you sense. Are, I'm saying that there will be some kids that may feel better and feel like their lives. No, 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 no. That, but... They, you s agreed with me, Ollie, just a few minutes ago that transitioning has saved kids' lives. Oh, like like anything in life, it can save lives, but also a lot of people. Like anything in life, what does that mean? A thing. What no, a lot of people will become suicidal later down the line because their body is completely messed up. Um, there, you know, so many different issues. He's with like their health. not not suicidal now, which is really happening. But like, what about a hypothetical suicide later in life that hasn't happened that could happen potentially? Consent, kids. That's that's how we offset uh, suicide. Kids can't consent to anything. What are we doing? No, We're not allowing them to. Uh, kids can't consent to go to church. Kid can't consent to go to school. Kids can't consent to anything. We we as parents make the best decision we can for the welfare of the kid. Don't you agree? I mean, this whole idea of consent is kind of moot when you consider all the things kids do in their life in their lives every day. Well, it's like a, a little kid that wants to be a dinosaur. Do you suddenly give him a surgery? Do you like think that wanting to be a dinosaur is is uh, comparable to uh, gender dysphoria, which is a known medical condition? I'm saying that some kids. You go said it's phases. like kids wanting to be dinosaurs, Ollie. I don't understand the comparison. Well, no, it is. It's like some kids change their mind about certain things. They're not mature enough to make these decisions. Do so you think wanting to be a parents. dinosaur is comparable to uh, being a uh, trans? I'm saying if a 10 year old kid dresses up as a dinosaur every day, they tell their dad they're a tyrannosaurus. Has that happened? Can you uh, cite that happening? I'm, you've been speaking about theoretical things. I'm speaking about. Well, no, 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 no. Well, we're talking about theoretical. Would you transition a child? We're talking about theoretical situations, but they are real happening in the real world. There are kids whose lives are being saved because, and this is the small amount of kids who undergo it, very small amount, that do it under doctors supervision and panels and stuff that it's saving their lives this is happening okay people are not i don't as far as i know maybe you can correct me saying i'm a dinosaur i need to transition into a dinosaur no i'm saying yeah the kids want different things they don't understand or comprehend. i notice you're saying i'm saying a lot you say things but you don't like to uh stay accountable to it you say no i'm saying this no i'm saying this no i'm saying this why won't you give me definitive answers well, I'm, I'm equating it. You know what? It is the same. It's, if a child wants to be a dinosaur, you don't cut okay, off their body okay. parts. It's the same. Body parts. It's, the, it's same. the same as being gender. It's the same as medically transitioning okay. a child and giving them Good. surgery. <laughs> Good. I'm glad you said that. Gender dysmorphia is a known medical condition. Is there any literature about transitioning to be a dinosaur? Not that you know. <laughs> right. But you said it's the same. But clearly it's not, right? Because no, I'm equating, I'm equating is a, a kid. Is, a, is accepted. I'm equating a kid. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I'm equating a kid identifying in a different way. You don't just suddenly say, if a kid feels a certain way, oh, we're going to do this operation, we're going to give you hormones. Kids of course can't that doesn't happen, Ollie. Like that that doesn't happen. Do it as an adult. That doesn't happen. 
you have a child who's experiencing gender dysmorphia so severe that they're going to kill themselves. Dysphoria, excuse me. They're undergoing panels and doctors and stuff. And this kid, we know, and this has happened, either we intervene or the child kills themselves. What's your decision? Most kids grow out of gender That's dysphoria. That's not what I so asked. Why can't you answer? Most kids no, do not grow out of gender dys, uh, dys, uh, dysmorphia. Not only 99... Oh, that's a small number of them, and 99% who get the operations uh, don't regret it. You have to answer this, Ollie. This is important. If well, there's a child that's going to kill itself unless it gets uh, gender-affirming care, what is your decision? Let well, them, a study, give, yeah. them the deci give them the decision. Give them the treatment or not? This is a great trap. No, you give them mental health support instead. You do not. No, 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 no. That's not what I'm asking. Do if this kid is suicidal, which is a known phenomenon, this happens. Do you let them get the treatment, or do you make them wait till they're 18? You give them other support instead. That's so they kill answer. themselves. No, they. How is no, that kind, that Dolly? You give them mental how, health. how is it? How is that kind that you're letting children's kill themselves instead of letting them get? Gender affirming really life saving care, which by the way happens only irreversible gender care, uh, gender surgeries and stuff only happens like 250 times a year. No, it doesn't happen. Well, you have no statistics to back that up. Well, there's a clinic in Oregon, I can send you the statistics. Oh, there's a clinic in Oregon that does at least 300 surgeries on kids a year, so that's just one that's clinic. That's impossible, six, that's not true. There's 60, there's 60 clinics in the US that are pediatric. Oh, over years, over years, yes, yeah, 60 kids. over years. So, but the, again, so there's 50 million kids in America, Ali, that's not a lot. But I'm saying there's 60 gender clinics that are performing these surgeries every single week across the country so look it up and let's see how say, many let's say that of the a thousand there's 10 kids who are going to kill themselves do we let them get this treatment or not again you give the kids mental you're, health support you're choosing for them to kill themselves ollie no i'm not don't yes, try to are. say that this, but this you are but subject. that's what you're saying ollie i'm not saying that, that is what I'm you're saying, saying. you're denying kids. them life-saving gender affirming care no, I'm saying give the kids no, mental health support. Until yeah, you're, they can you're saying use adults. this avenue that doesn't work, that's not going to work to prevent you from killing yourself. You're telling them. Also, gender affirming care is a part of a comprehensive health care solution. You can only do the therapy that I approve of. You it's like saying uh, if let's say there's someone who's a schizophrenic, right? And the doctor is prescribing lithium. And Ollie's like, no lithium, only prayer and also whatever form of therapy he finds to be enough. It's like, what the fuck are you talking about, dude? It's just like, that's how comprehensive healthcare works. Sometimes you actually do medical intervention beyond just like therapy sessions. The times it is reversible. And, 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 and for bipolar, it, sorry, not schizophrenia, right? Lithium is for bipolar disorder. I fucked it up. Care under doctor supervision. You want this kid to kill well, himself. Well, actually, for both. You... I'm pretty sure lithium uh, can be used for schizophrenia, too. Immunity. Like regulation in general. Immunity that you're a part of. You sold yourself out for some attention and some money, and you're, you're, you are dooming kids to kill themselves. How do you live with that? Before it was Ethan, cute, it's... silly stuff about transracial and K PTS and pop stuff, and it was just silly nonsense about uh, ra little racist uh -oh. stuff about Korean uh -oh. people having tiny Beanie's penises. Beanie's coming off. But now you're, you're actually delving oh, into shit. transphobic, violent transphobia that is going to result in kids dying. You're going to have to reckon with that, Ollie. No, uh, absolutely not. You're trying to paint me out as saying I'm this. Only I'm only saying, saying what you said. Kids cannot consent. No, Ethan, Kids I'm can't not consent that. to anything. Kids, kids can't cannot consent to irreversible hormones or surgeries even. okay a kid they needs to get his leg removed because he has leg cancer should he be able to get the, the leg removed well if he has a cancer yes but okay so what's the fucking can't... difference he can't consent to have his leg removed that's irreversible well many of these kids are being pushed into it many grow out of gender dysphoria if you google the, right but now, i'm telling you kids kill themselves if they don't get this treatment in the rare case that is that severe about 250 a year well, show me. Okay, pull up a pull up a case then. I'm sure we can do that. That's not a problem. Give me one second. Wait, what? Pull up a case. Gender gonna... affirming care is mental health support. 
<laughs> what is Ollie right. gonna do? What is Ollie gonna do? Be like, uh, actually, uh, fuck that kid. Like, <laughs> that kid had bad vibes. Uh, he should have killed himself. Like, is that what you're what you're gonna do? He's like, give me an yeah, anecdote, please, so I can fucking rip it apart. With like, dysmorphia what? is gender affirming care. Do you know more than pediatrics association and psychiatrists association? Yeah, because all of these you companies, know they made two point they made two point two billion dollars uh, transitioning kids last year. So it's a multi billion dollar industry with a lot of power. So people make kids. so people make money from it. So therefore, we shouldn't let kids save them their lives. No, you can provide. I'm, I'm not going to keep question. going about this. That's a great question. We like okay. People make money off of fucking cancer treatment. Uh, no more chemotherapy. Sorry, Personal issues. And when they you're right, adults. we should make it free. <laughs> you're right. People shouldn't be charged for it. I agree. Oh my God! No, no. He just shut. No, I'm just not going to keep going on about the same thing, Ethan. I'm good. I need to go anyway. It's quite late. Ollie. He just shut the fuck up. That's I awesome. I want to tell you something. You really have sold your soul in this one. You know what I mean? Like before it was Ethan, cute and innocent, but this new one is you. really sick. And I mean, the Ethan. goals of you to sell a fucking lunch pail with a trans person on it while telling people that they're grooming kids. I mean, you're just a fucking hypocrite, dude. Ethan, you said some horrific comments about Ben Shapiro saying that he should be gassed I'm, like in the Holocaust. So you shouldn't be I didn't say that. I said, you, you, I'll tell you exactly what I said. And how dare you say such a... No, you said you care. said that about, I made a no, joke you, that, you he's, that he's 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 perpetuating anti-Semitism, and therefore, if there's another, you know, then I then he can go, you know, and uh, I'd be Wait, happy to, to I'd, I'd be happy to go right behind him. I am about. Jewish though, so chill out. No, I know that, but I'm just saying it's not something to joke about. So you know, when you're trying to criticize for me for certain things, so, you know, you've also said some things that are very harmful as well. Well, hold so on, to take accountability. So, so you're what? admitting that what you say about trans people is offensive? No, I'm talking well, about how my is it past comparable behaviors to what I have said? been harmful. I'm talking about my past behaviors, you know, have been harmful. I'm but not I'm talking about your past behavior. I'm talking people. about what you're doing now that endangers children. Because you're trying to make a now quick I'm helping buck. People. Now, no, I'm helping people, Ethan. You're helping Tucker Carlson spread propaganda that's going to kill trans people. And you're selling a book called Gender Madness. After you, tra how long have you been a? Oh, how long have you been a man? How long have you been detransitioned? And you're writing a book already. It's been seven months. Seven <laughs> months, I Ollie. I mean, you were trans for years. How are you going to spend seven months as a man and then presume to tell people how to live their lives? That also, we got more Tucker Carlson leaks. Holy fuck! More Tucker Carlson leaks coming from Fox News. So long. Yeah, but the book is about my how I got to where I was, what led me to that, and how people struggle with different identities. It's actually a self-help book, so it's very positive, empowering about different ways people can help themselves. Gender madness. Here's your best friend, Jamie Mitchell, who's the founder of uh, Gays Against Groomers, uh, saying, uh, supporting... Um, well, here, just What's watch. What's happening now would make, you know, I think Joseph Mengele, uh, I believe that was his name, you know, the Nazi doctor, um, he, you know, this puts him to shame. They are Do you believe that's an appropriate analogy? Well, uh, Joseph Mengele tortured and uh, performed medical, horrific medical procedures on kids. You know, what Jewish they're doing kids today, during the he, Holocaust. He also, uh, he also committed it's, a genocide against trans people, by the way. He committed a genocide against trans people as well. He killed well, a lot of LGBT about people. The Holocaust. That shit's so fucked up, uh, actually. that That's one of the most nefarious and awful ways that these pieces of shit Lab talk. rats for this sick ideology. Um, and she sounds their like him right now. Like any of you know, yeah, even like any abuse of kids, an, an any experimentation on kids is wrong. Um, and a threat to that. <laughs> Ollie London's like leukemia. Let them fucking die, okay? Ollie London is like leukemia. Uh, let's let them kill children instead. Any medical experimentation in regards to like uh, a cure, fucking kill them, dude. What do you mean? Um, and we. Are do you believe that doctors are performing Nazi-like uh, experiments on trans kids? Doctors are, are experimenting on kids. To what and, end? You know, what is the experiment? Any medical mutilation on kids 
is bad. And you know, An experiment the underlies data, a thesis. What is their thesis? I'm saying there's no long-term data on how does this affect a Yes, kid's there body is. 99% don't regret line. it. 27. How does this affect a kid 20 years down the line? Because they're we happy. see issues. 99% are happy. We see issues. 27 with studies. Look at the study by Dr. Bradley, Canadian. She was the pioneer for uh, performing these gender affirming cares on kids. What if I told you Dr. Bradley was a quack? Well, uh, they're all quacks. Anyone that oh, experiments okay. on kids in the first place is a quack. All right, Ollie. We're going to. Uh, anyway, thank you for uh, uh, spending your time. I do appreciate you coming on. But no, it's good to talk. It was, it was, uh, <laughs> it was something. I think he but ripped I, I, them. I, you know, uh, I think he ripped Ollie. But notice how Ollie, like I said, is a is a more, uh, uh, like Ollie London looks weird and and is not like the best person as far as like a, the best speaker. But given the area that he occupies, given the area that he occupies. It's very hard to go up against like transphobic motherfuckers because you're going up against a person that is like pretty much borderline uh, schizophrenic, right? Like you're talking to someone with mental delusions and they are going to constantly pull you into like their delusions and have you address their delusions. And it's like, well, I can't argue against your own fucking world, man. Like you made up half this shit. It's literally like arguing against uh, uh arguing against flat earthers right <laughs> that's how it works like if your grift has no basis in reality and it's just like inherently harmful and all it is uh, there to do is just like uh you know push more harmful uh propaganda it's very difficult to argue against them right like he basically made up you know child experiments happening on children that's like bad he lied about a whole bunch of shit. Uh, but even then, that's why I said it's like very difficult. That's the same thing conservatives say about us leftists, though. I mean, it doesn't matter. The conservatives can say whatever the fuck they want. We're currently talking about conservatives and their mania. It's difficult to argue against uh, people, transphobic people like this, because they're in a totally different league. It's like arguing against a flat earther. They're going to give you junk science. You need to know the junk science and address it. If you haven't studied the junk science, it makes it very difficult. Same with, uh, same with like super transphobic people. So even someone as stupid as Ali London could come across as like uh, coherent in some ways, even though he's like insane, right? And I think that's what happened here with Ethan. Uh, but Ethan still did a very good job of addressing a lot of the most unhinged parts of this conversation. Um, it's it's of course going to be like less, I guess, content and less punchy than, for example, uh, you know, debating that other cult guy. But he did a great job. He did a fucking fantastic job. This is why ContraPoints isn't speaking on trans issues anymore. She's tired of talking to brick walls to try and spread her message to all... Us NPCs in the world, all the way back from Blair White incident to currently the Megan incident is just awfulness. I don't know what the current Megan incident is, but I know why ContraPoints doesn't talk about trans issues. I can tell you why. Because she's trans. And like it or not, and I'm sorry, get mad at me if you want, but trans people are ruthless to other trans people. Like, trans people are uh, ultimately much more understanding and much more forgiving of cis people because they recognize that the normative position is that cis people are transphobic. So when you have a cis person who's not transphobic, uh, but like will fuck up every now and then trans people will oftentimes still look at it with like a very critical lens, but are way more forgiving. ContraPoints on the other hand, uh, comes across as the authority of, of uh, trans issues to a broader cis audience. And a lot of people get mad at that. You know what I mean? And this doesn't mean that like ContraPoints hasn't done anything cringe or bad or wrong. Every now and then, you know, she'll appear on a fucking Hillary Clinton video. And I'm like, wow, that's 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 not great. But ultimately, I think she's she's great. You know what I mean? Um, she has uh, disagreements on MB stuff or MB related issues, I think. Um, but but like I said, ultimately, you got to look at the broader you have to look at the broader uh, 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 content that this person has provided. 
Anyway, I don't want to get too super deep into uh into like trans issues, especially because like um I I feel as though there are a lot of like uh it feels like you're monolithizing trans people like in that analysis, not going to lie. Yeah, a little bit. But I do I mean, what? <laughs> if there's one monolith that actually absolutely sticks amongst trans people is that trans people love fucking yelling at other trans people for having you know, like minor disagreements over uh, uh, trans issues. Is that not true? Go to any trans space and, and you know, bring up one point of contention and see uh, how that works. And on top of that, I think trans people, this is from my own, this is from my own personal, uh, uh, you know, observation as a cis person. Trans people are a little bit more understanding of cis people than they are of, of uh, trans people, or other trans people, trans content creators in general. Yeah, trans people are very leftist, for, and a lot of them are, so that's not that surprising. What are those points of contention? Nah, uh, uh, nah, nah, nah. Uh, not today. <laughs> what, a, what a good one, dude. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> You think I'm gonna think I'm gonna engage in that? No, 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 no! Get the fuck out of here! I'm dodging that shit. 